He makes the game look so easy. So easy. Just a very, very beautiful player to watch. Golden child. He was like the golden child. He was perfection. a child of power and privilege. When he came home from school, he had to call me at the Pentagon. Oh, can you believe he got that high? He transformed Duke into a dynasty. As good an athlete as they all had, they didn't have Grant Hill. Grant Hill, smooth as silk. He redefined the image of pro basketball. Grant is everything good about the NBA was touted as an heir to the king. This is Jordan Light. He just takes over the game. He's one of the best players that's ever played this game. Then, crippling injuries turned Grant Hill's career into an epic test of character. Grant has been put to sleep and operated on four times. This is not the first time he's come back. This isn't the second time he's come back. People think I'm washed up, that I'm stupid for trying, that I'm done. But Hill vows to beat the odds, mounting one final effort to stake his claim to greatness. He's got a true warrior spirit, and he will not yield. He feels like something was taken from him, and he's ready to take it back. Oh, man. If I can get back, man, watch out. This is Grand Hill. Beyond the glory. Absolutely outstanding. Unbelievable. Better than two days that he's done on baseball. Do you have anything to say to your fans? January 16th, 2003. A Thursday night game between the Washington Wizards and the Orlando Magic. And a final twilight matchup between basketball's once and future kings. Michael Jordan. And Grant Hill. I wanted to go against Jordan. I knew that it was probably my last time playing against him. At age 40, Michael Jordan was on the home stretch of a perfect career. Grant Hill was 10 years younger, and the player once destined to inherit Jordan's mantle as the finest in the game. He does things on the court that, um, you know, you have to go look at the replay and say, how did he do that? Somehow, he hit it! Grant Hill got it, and he sticks it! But three ankle surgeries in three years had turned Hill into a ghost of his former self. Now, as he struggled to keep up with an aging Jordan, his ankle was falling apart once more. I mean, I knew going into the game it was, it was fractured. I had known that a few games before that. But this time, I couldn't really move. Sensing Hill's physical weakness, Jordan erupted for 32 points that night. Grand Hill scored two, then limped off the court. Another basketball season in shambles, and his future in grave doubt. You just sat there with a tear in your eye and a lump in your throat, because you knew it was not good. He really had to start asking himself some questions that no one else could give him the answer, questions about whether it was worth it. I just knew that, you know, I can't keep prolonging this. I can't delay the inevitable. This would maybe be my last time. Grant Hill grew up with an aura of great expectations. His father, Calvin, was a Yale graduate and a star NFL running back. His mother, Janet, worked in the Pentagon with the Secretary of the Army. Their social circle included friends like Bill and Hillary Clinton. Grant was their only child. Calvin's an only child and so am I. We were very happy only children, as children ourselves. Uh, Grant was very unhappy his entire life as an only child and blamed us, of course. 
I always wanted siblings, I wanted cousins, I wanted aunts and uncles. In some respects, I mean, I feel like I missed out on that. You know, I don't mind it now, but as a kid, I didn't like it. From his lone perch, Grant got a big view of the world. His parents took him to far-flung locales, from Asia to Egypt to Capitol Hill. But he was most comfortable growing up in the D.C. suburb of Reston, Virginia, a planned community of residents from all walks of life. Grant grew up with lots of different kinds of people. It's helped him uh, be able to, you know, to get along. I wanted to always kind of blend in and fit in and be like everyone else. And I um, always wanted to downplay my parents' success. But Grant was never in danger of being spoiled by fame and fortune. Not around the house, where his mom was known as the general. Grant wasn't allowed too many independent thoughts when he was a little child. He had to clear everything with his mother. When he came home from school, he had to call me at the Pentagon. If I didn't get that call, he was in deep doo-doo. There were times when my friends would be at my house and they'd get in trouble, and my mother would send them to my room. Yeah, a little nervous walking in there. Um, you just, hello, Mrs. Hill, hello, Mr. Hill. Um, you, just, you walked gently, you just, you know, went to Grant's room, you didn't make too much noise. I was the disciplinarian, and Calvin was the fun parent. When he wasn't playing professionally, Calvin joined Grant and his friends in pickup games on the street. On family trips, he took his son to art galleries. You know, I mean, I always look at my dad as kind of a, a, a renaissance man. He doesn't fit the mold of what you think of as a football player. One thing Calvin wouldn't let his son do was play organized football. People would be comparing him to what they thought I was. And, uh, and the expectations sometimes are unreal. I tried to encourage Grant to play basketball, where everybody can dribble the ball and everybody gets a chance to shoot. Grant showed skill on the court from an early age. By the time he entered South Lakes High School, his coach figured he was good enough to skip freshman basketball and go straight to the varsity. But Grant resisted the offer. He said, Coach, I really, you know, I really don't want to do that. And the reasoning behind that was because he didn't want to surpass his peers. I wanted to play freshman basketball. I wanted to play with my friends. You know, I didn't want to jump over them and uh, appear better than them. Somehow it got back to his friends, and they were excited for him. And I think once he realized they didn't feel that somehow he felt he was better than them, he sort of relaxed and went with the flow. Grant's court style reflected his personality. He was a modest star who inspired teammates with smart and unselfish play. If you want Grant's team, he just made you better. But while Grant's fame and popularity grew at South Lakes, he never got the chance to be a big shot. His parents held him to a strict standard. And I had to be in at a certain time, and one time I was late, and uh, she told me to take my watch off. And I broke the watch because I said, you're not using the watch, so you don't really need this. It got to the point where my friends didn't want to go out with me because they knew that at some point they'd have to drive me home. So it was better to just not go at all. By the spring of 1990, Grant was a high school All-American and eager to step out on his own. I wanted him to go to Georgetown, and my husband wanted him to go to North Carolina. And that's the reason Grant went to Duke. Unlike Georgetown and North Carolina, Duke had never won a national title. But after meeting with Blue Devils coach Mike Krzyzewski, Grant decided to share that challenge. He just knows how to connect with people, and um, he connected with me. I think he longed for brothers and sisters and family. He wanted to be a part of something bigger than him. Coach K made it a point to get him involved, make him feel like he's part of the team, feel like he's an important part of the team. When you're in that foxhole, you can look at each other, and it's not just Hey, this is my teammate, but this is a guy I know. This is like a brother. This is like family. As his freshman season unfolded, 
Grant fit right in. Grant Hill buries another one. Grant Hill for Duke. This man ranks right up there as some of the best I've seen in college basketball. In the spring of 1991, Duke met defending champion UNLV in the NCAA Final Four. Grant Hill comes out of the pack. He's playing like a veteran. Grant held All-American Stacy Ogden to six points as Duke stunned everyone to advance to the finals. As good an athlete as they all had, they didn't have Grant Hill. He'll pull up. Oh, can you believe he got that high? Look at this play. Incredible. Duke has won its first national championship. 19-year-old freshman Grand Hill had made his entrance on the national stage. Few imagined what he would do for an encore. Will the dream die here for Duke? Two point something seconds left on the clock. Coach K asked me if I could make the pass. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Beyond the Glory on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Dockers Pro Style, shirts and pants that do it all. Winning their first NCAA title in the spring of 1991 put Duke University and Grant Hill on the map. With the core of that team in place for the following season, they vowed to win two in a row. We had that swagger, we had that confidence. We felt we could win without Coach K. That's how confident we were. Duke went wire to wire, ranked number one through the 91-92 regular season, and were favored to win it all when they met Kentucky in the NCAA Regional Finals. Before the game, you know, we just felt like, you know, it's, it's just a ceremony. We're going to go out there and we'll win by 15 to 20. But Kentucky played Duke even down the stretch and deep into overtime. I was really scared that we weren't going to win that game. And, um, you know, it came down to the wire two or three times. 7.8 seconds remaining. Then as the clock ticked down, Kentucky made a move to ice the game. What? All of a sudden, our run for this great year, number one all season, looked like it was going to be over. With two seconds to play, Duke had to inbound the ball from the far end of the court. Coach K turned to Grant. I said, can you throw the ball 75 feet? And he said, yeah, I can, I can do that. I knew that as soon as he gave his word that he would do it. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yeah! Football was in my jeans, and uh, I had one time on national television to display them. So that was kind of neat. <laughs> Duke went on to win their second straight title in 1992. But while upperclassmen Christian Leitner and Bobby Hurley got the plaudits, Grant remained comfortably in the background. He'll do everything you ask him to do, but at times, because he's reluctant to overstep his bounds, you need to say, go ahead, because he still wants permission. Part of it was my upbringing, respecting your elders, respecting those that are older than you, I think sometimes that got in the way of, of my talent, my abilities, my greatness, whatever you want to call it. I took him aside one day after playing and I said, you know, you're really strong, you're really big, you're really good with the ball. Um, be more aggressive. When his freshman and sophomore year with all those who were older than him, he deferred to them. When they left, he accepted the mantle. senior season at Duke, Hill was displaying leadership and competitive fire. 
I said, we're going to ride you as long as we possibly can. We had a thing, and Coach K called it the going to Charlotte offense, because that's where the Final Four was. That going to Charlotte offense meant give the ball to Grant and get out of his way. Hill for three. Hill took his team to the NCAA Finals for the third time in four years. Great defense, Arkansas. They take it away. Arkansas is in home heaven. And though Duke lost to Arkansas in the 94 title game, Grant's dominant play impressed a legion of admirers. I like Duke basketball because I like Grant Hill. All right. <laughs> now it is my great pleasure to retire the jersey of a young man who has exemplified all that is best about this sport. Number 33, Grant Hill. By the time he came out of Duke, he was a celebrity. Not just a great player, but he was a marquee player. With the third pick in the 1994 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select Grant Hill from Duke University. Grant Hill stepped up to the NBA in the fall of 1994, after Michael Jordan stepped away. There was a void of Michael's departure to baseball at that point and the sense was, who's going to take his place? Well, here's Grant Hill. Hill didn't disappoint. Grant Hill! Grant Hill taking it inside, hits the finger roll! He's in the book, his first two NBA points! Even as a rookie, he played the pro game with an artist's grace. Grant Hill, smooth as silk! had a calmness about him on the court that, you know, it seemed like he'd been there before, like he had did this before. Three months into his first season, Grant was the leading vote-getter in the NBA All-Star Game. By that time, his wholesome image had advertisers lining up. The simple notion of playing the game with grace and joy has returned. Say hello to Grand Hill. You know, you didn't have to do anything. He, he, he sold himself by just being himself. It was all this talk of, you know, he's such a nice guy, and he's this, that, and the other. So I was just like, you know, let's just, you know, let's poke fun at that. You're too nice. We'll fix that. What are you doing to the boards? Bro, oh. elbow. The guy's on a fast break. Triple. The guy looks at you. you. Refer to his mother. What's this? The pendulum had swung in the direction of kind of the bad boy image, and Grant came on the scene when the pendulum was ready to swing back in the opposite direction. But Hill grew uncomfortable when he was hailed by some in the media as a basketball savior. It was almost like. You're an African American, you, you're upper class, upper middle class, whatever, and you're not like the rest of them. I just feel that it was an opportunity for people to knock some other players in the league and sort of using me for that person. Hill's special status didn't go unnoticed by opponents. He became a physical target and would remain one for years to come. They see that you're being advertised, marketed by the league, and they, they want to go after you. Grant was banged in the back of the head. There's definitely jealousy in the NBA. I mean, people will go at you. And as a competitor, you like that. You want to get the best of everybody. So on the court, I didn't have a problem with it. Hill didn't back down. He shared honors with Jason Kidd as NBA Rookie of the Year. We're the rookies of the year, and we love this game. But when Doug Collins arrived to coach the Pistons for Hill's second season, he challenged his young star to raise his game higher. 
I said, Grant, I'm not going to let you take a backseat to anybody in this league. And what it means is the last three minutes of the game for us, when the game is online, the ball has to be in your hand. Hill to set a dead dribble, crossed over, plant into the lane, and powers down a two-hander. I remember a game Grant had like a triple double and then Doug still was demanding more from him and I was like, man, the guy just had a triple double. I put a lot in his lap simply because I knew he was capable of it. I think maybe it made him uncomfortable at times, but I think it really helped him grow. Grant led the all-star voting again in his second season and took the Pistons to the 1996 playoffs. That summer, he won a gold medal with the U.S. Olympic team. He possessed everything that you were looking for in a superstar. Grant Hill appeared to be the master of his destiny, but his career was about to take a startling turn. We do an X-ray. The trainer's like, holy crap, he's looking at it. He's just like, he couldn't believe what he saw. season, Grant Hill was an NBA icon and the leader of a team on the rise. Now it's Grant Hill. Back door alley. You got it! He led the Pistons to 54 victories in the 96-97 season and finished third in the race for MVP behind Carl Malone and Michael Jordan. This is Jordan. He just takes over the game. Grant Hill just pushed. He has the ability to not dominate necessarily with his scoring, but his passing, his rebounding, and that's the way I utilized him in Detroit, and he was, he was magnificent. Grant's game was blossoming off the court as well. A blind date with popular singer Tamiya Washington soon turned into something more. I'm officially missing you. We went to the movies at like 2 o'clock, so no one was there. We were there by ourselves, and we really got a chance to talk and, you know, find out about each other and what we both liked and disliked, and um, we were finishing each other's sentences, so it was good. You know, you just know, you know, and sometimes you just, the chemistry, everything kind of just seems to work well, and... We really clicked right away. I wasn't used to dating men who were that tall, but he was a gentle giant. <laughs> but not everyone admired Grant's easygoing personality. When the Pistons failed to reach the playoffs in Hill's fourth season, Doug Collins was fired. And Grant heard talk that for all his talent, he liked the toughness and killer instinct of a true superstar. It goes back to Grant's demeanor and who he is. I want everybody to like me. I don't want to say anything to somebody that might upset them. You can't please everybody, and not everyone's going to like you. you know, sometimes even your teammates may not like you. But you just continue to, to do what's right. You work hard, you're professional. Hill quietly set out to answer critics by working harder on his game in the offseason than ever before. That fourth year really was kind of a wake-up call. And you know, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to work my tail off. And I got into the best shape I'd been in. And that was a turning point for me. Grant turned his team around, too. By the spring of 99, the Pistons were back in the playoffs. People talk, I think they think eh, Grant was too nice and wasn't fierce enough on the court. I know that's totally, totally <laughs> the opposite of what he was. The 99-2000 season was Hill's finest yet. Grant Hill, oh, the tray. Gets to the paint, double clutcher off the glass, count it. He averaged over 25 points and drew the admiration of top rivals. Grant Hill, tremendous amount of skills he has in the basketball court. He'll be able to do everything. 
Uh, he has a total package. He'll turn on the jet just like that. There comes a point where you just feel like everything sort of comes together and it's all easy. Great play by Hill. Boy, that's pretty. Now, see, that's a better one right there. That's a guy that knows. That year, that was it. Back to Hill. Uncontested with the dunk. For six NBA seasons, Hill was an Iron Man on the court. So when his left ankle began hurting as the 2000 playoffs approached, he took the pain in stride. I was told I had a bone bruise, but I was never really told not to play. You know, I was just like, you have a bone bruise, but you'll be fine. There was so much pressure on him to play through pain, and there seemed to be a lot of pressure on him to play no matter what. But when the 2000 playoffs began against Miami, the pain grew worse. In the middle of game two, Grant hit the wall. I went out there and it was killing. One play, he comes over and he comes to the sideline and he goes, Arnie, he goes, I, I felt kind of funny and I heard a pop and I said, well, come on out. And he goes, no, 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 he goes, give me one more set to the next time out. Third quarter, I pulled myself out of the game. And it was weird because I don't, I don't think the team knew the severity of it. After the game, Hill found out. We do an x-ray. And an x-ray comes out, looks at it, and the trainer's like, holy crap, he's looking at it, he's just like, he couldn't believe what he saw. And I'm looking at him like, don't move, I'm gonna get you some crutches. I looked at the x-ray and the bone was completely mo removed. Grant Hill's season was over. So was his six-year contract with the Pistons. But despite Hill's broken ankle, NBA teams lined up that summer to woo him away from Detroit. Chicago did a videotape where they had Oprah and she was saying, come to Chicago and... New York came in and they had like five or six celebrities there. And mind you, his leg is up, you know, so everybody knew um, that he was injured, but it wasn't really, you know, a big deal to them. In August of 2000, Hill agreed to a seven-year, $92 million deal with Orlando. Another star free agent, Tracy McGrady, quickly followed suit. You put Grant Hill with Tracy McGrady, and I mean, <laughs> you're talking championship. Okay, the question is, what place do I prefer to live in, Orlando or Detroit? <laughs> Orlando. Crutches or no crutches, Grant's future looked bright. I'll have surgery, I'll get better and be back, you know? and. I didn't know what I was looking forward to. We're running down the hallway and the doctor's like, could there be a chance he overdosed? Then I start crying. After spending the summer of 2000 recovering from a broken ankle, Grant Hill was eager to make a new start in Orlando. He wanted to get on the floor. He wanted to prove that he was worth the contract. I went from being on crutches in three months, getting off those crutches, and then playing a month later. The home of the brave. Grant's wife, Tamia, opened the proceedings for his first game with the Magic. Grant took it from there. helped lead the Magic to victory that night. But he wasn't the same. After the first game, he comes home and he's like, my ankle, it's, it's hurting. And, you know, he would put it up on the table and it would just be huge. I couldn't do things that I could do before. Getting my shots stuffed and blocked and not being able to stay in front of people. After four games, Hill's season was over. Doctors discovered that Hill's ankle had fractured again. They suggested a second operation. As crazy as it sounds, I was relieved. I was relieved to know that it wasn't in my head, that there was actually something physically wrong with me. And, uh, okay, hey, if something's wrong, let's get it fixed. As Hill sat on the sidelines, Sympathetic fans voted him onto the All-Star team for the sixth time. 
Eager to reward their faith, he put in long hours of rehab. When you're hurt and you've been out for a long period of time, you sometimes sort of fall victim to, well, I have to make up for lost time. Going into my second season in Orlando, I mean, I overtrained. I did too much. I, you know, I was trying to get that whole season back. For Orlando fans, the fall of 2001 brought a return of high hopes. Tracy McGrady, Daryl Armstrong, Horace Grant, Patrick Ewing, Frank Hill, believe. Sports Illustrated predicted that Hill would lead the Magic to the NBA Finals. Grant thought so too. No more crutches, no more boots. I have a bunch of clean left shoes at home that, that, that are looking to be worn, so I look forward to wear them. Beats him off the dribble, scoops it in. Oh man, what a play by him. All right, that's going to make the highlights all around the country, so that'll answer your question right there. Man, Hill! What a difference a year has made for him. This time, Hill lasted 14 games before his ankle drove him to the sidelines. There was a lot of doubt and, and sort of worry on my part. Will I ever be able to get back, even if the ankle heals? A week before Christmas, he underwent another season-ending surgery. In the midst of Grant's trials, there was one ray of light. A few weeks after his surgery, he and Tamiya celebrated the birth of their first child, Myla. For me and what I've been going through personally, it was great to have, you know, a welcome addition. When Myla was born, he was around all the time, and we enjoyed just being a family because our minds were on something other than, how's your ankle today? As he prepared for his third season with the Magic in 2002, Grant showed a brave face, but few shared his confidence anymore. They would have articles about, you know, is he ever coming back, and what a bust, and we spent all this money, and it was starting for the first time to become negative. You feel like people are looking at you like, man, are you really, like, you know, he's kind of milking it, you know, you just gave you all this money, and man, he, he should be okay. He acted like it, it didn't really phase him, but it did. It, you know, it hurts. Then the season began, and Grant Hill really was back. Grant Hill sees an opening, so he pulls up, jumps down, and good. Boy, that's a great move. Super impressive right now. I was able to get by people. I was able to slash. I was able to be exciting and quick and fast in the open court. As Hill goes, slices through the lane. Everyone started to get high hopes again, and they were starting to, wow, I, he's back. One game here on Christmas Day against Detroit on national television. He and McGrady were just marvelous. Grant Hill pulls up and knocks it in. McGrady crossing over and goes. We whipped Detroit, and it was a beautiful sight. And you thought, we're there. And it was right after that that it all fell apart. A growing soreness in Hill's left ankle was attributed, at first, to tendonitis. When they sent tendonitis, we were like, yes, ten he can work through that. I would sit out a few games, I, you know, I would uh, you know, play, sit out, and it just progressively got worse over a two month period. He would come home and he would, you know, talk about how it was hurting, and I was just like, I cannot believe it. The end came on a January night in Washington, D.C. I think Grant Hill is struggling right now. He's grimacing every now and then. He may have twisted that ankle. It was another fracture, and same fracture. And um, so that was tough because I knew it, I'd gotten close. Hill consulted with doctors at Duke Medical Center, who proposed a more complex surgery than before, one which required breaking a bone in his heel to correct the alignment of his legs. 
it was good to finally get an explanation as to why this thing may have occurred in the first place and then why it keeps continuing to break down. That really gave him hope and I think that really cleared up any questions he had in his mind about whether or not he was gonna try again. The surgery performed at Duke Medical Center in March of 2003 was deemed a success. But one week after that, an infection from the operation sent Grant into a fever delirium. Tamiya rushed him back to the hospital. I pull up into the emergency room and they have the stretcher and he's shaking and we're running down the hallway and the doctor's like, Has he, is he on medication? The ankle had always been serious, but now it could be his life. Ended up having a, a skin graft from my arm taken to kind of make a patch over the infected area. So that was, that was quite an ordeal. We kind of really kept quiet about it for a long time because it was just, it was very scary for both of us. The surgery, the infection, and the prolonged recovery kept Grant on crutches for six months. It has been an ordeal. I think he's held on to his sense of humor, but he's also uh, uh, shown a healthy sense of humility. You just appreciate being able to walk, you know, maybe more than you, than you ever, ever had before. <laughs> When the magic began the 2003-2004 season that November, Grant Hill was not in uniform, but he was back on his feet and setting his sights on the prize one final time. He quietly is preparing, you know, for one last push, one last effort. I know there are those who may hear this and still think I'm crazy, but, you know, I still feel like I can do it. Beyond the Glory on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Dockers Pro Style, shirts and pants that do it all. Spring 2004, another long lost season for the Orlando Magic. For Grant Hill, another season viewed from the sidelines. As tough as it is, it's also, I think, necessary to be somehow connected as much as I can to the team and to the guys. So, you know, can't play, and this is the next best thing, I guess. To a new generation of NBA players, Grant Hill is an old school memory. The spotlight, which was once his, has moved on to a fresh crop of stars. When a LeBron comes or a Carmelo Anthony, deep within Grant, would love that challenge. So it does have to be frustrating. You know, he's sitting there off totally to the sideline. All he can do is watch. As Grant faces an uncertain future, he draws strength from his family. His father, Calvin, had endured painful knee injuries throughout his own career. Even when you are succeeding, uh, you, you know, you, you, you're constantly being knocked down, and you have to get up. And the key is that you continue to try, that you continue to aspire. To see how hard he's worked to come back from his ankle, it's inspiring to me. A lot of athletes would have imploded through that injury, turned to drugs or something else, and he's been you know, he's been, been stoic and busy. He's kept busy, too. We are so grateful to Grand Hill and his wife, Tamiya, for making their treasures available to the nation. Recurrent injuries forced Hill to envision a life beyond basketball. All right, good In the midst of everything, he always finds a way to bring a positive into a negative. The positives have been all of the things that he's been involved in outside of basketball. Franklin the Turtle dragged his shell behind him. He's been involved in so many things. 
Habitat for Humanity, child abuse programs. There we go. Michelangelo. He's done a good job down there. He wants to share what he has, and he wants others to share with him. Come on, man, me and you. He's not afraid about what would happen if he can't play anymore because he's optimistic about the rest of his life and the other things he's going to do. But Grant believes he can come back. Day after day, he grinds it out, rebuilding his body for one last shot. You don't really know how much you love something until it breaks your heart. And if you keep coming back, it tells you how much you really love it. He hadn't really faced any adversity before the ankle injury, so he looks at it like this is, you know, this is my testimony. This is my great story. He's constantly being teased. You know, you're so close, but yet so far. But I know, I know my time, my day will come. Grand Hill's athletic odyssey is yet to reach its final destination. But for those who watched him persevere with grace and fortitude, he's already gone the distance. When you see a guy who has heart, and he's trying everything he can to get back up, that's what it's about. We see so many young athletes succumb and fall apart. Grant's been able to rise above that. That may be the greatest accomplishment of all, to get through this circus that we live in you know, and, and keep your values. It's a journey, man, it really is. And I, I don't think the journey's over. I think there's, there's uh, more to it. You know, I think there's a lot more to it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on this ride, and I'm gonna finish it out.